Alrighty, welcome back to Andy's Little Corner where Andy will share some production updates for April or talk about everything that's happened in March. If you guys haven't seen the April Fool's video, make sure you check that out because I put some level of effort into it but it's really funny. I guess I should start off by saying that if you want to learn more about everything that's going on, I have everything that I talk about in the blog and more. Uh, so check out our website. Let's talk about Long Mill. So Long Mill production continues to ship out as usual. I believe last month we were waiting on some new control boards to show up and we have gotten a big batch of them now so we're starting to ship out machines and clearing the queue it looks like right now based on our list machines that have been ordered about two to three weeks ago are shipping now and we'll continue to work through getting everything out as quickly as possible if you are looking for the latest lead times make sure to check out the website it'll say in the description when the machines are expected to ship. In terms of like the control board situation, we are waiting on more to come in and they should be here in about a, in a couple of weeks, maybe three to four weeks. We may run out right before we get the new boards in. So there might be about a week gap of like shipping pause for us to wait for those new boards. But obviously like as our typical faction, we pre-pack as much as we can so we can get everything cleared out as quickly as possible once those items come in. So one of the big questions people have been asking is, will the new machines eventually come with the super long board? And the answer is, our goal is to have that as a standard option. That's the default option for machines at some point in the future. If you guys don't know, we just launched the SLB and we started shipping them out yesterday. And the team is working to ship the first 470-ish boards in the next couple of weeks. We are also working on some minor changes to the production and the design to revise a couple things uh, for the next production batch. So the next production batch is expected to be 1,500 SLBs. So that'll be enough to put some of the, allocate some of that into the uh, the kits. That will probably be one of the bigger changes that we're expecting to do in batch 9. I guess I should also mention that with the long mills we make the machines in batches. I guess batch 1 was like our first batch when we first launched the long mill and then we make a certain number. I think the first one was 500, 300 or 500 and then it was like 500 then 1000 and 1500 and since then we've made the machines in batches of 1,500 units. Batch eight is another 1,500 units. We're getting close to the end of that batch. And probably in the summer, late summer, we'll finish batch eight and then we'll move on to batch nine and that'll be another 1,500 units. There's a couple other things that we've worked on for batch eight that will kind of get solidified as standard into the batch nine kits. Those include the spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts, these like locking collars for the lead screws. I don't know if you, well, if you guys are following, we used to have the brass ones with the set screw. These ones clamp on, so they're more sturdy and also are easier to remove. We have injection molded feet that I don't have one here, but we have a whole batch in the back. The super long board and the spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts will probably constitute a bit of a performance change. And then all the other changes are more for the uh, assembly, e ease of assembly and ease of maintenance sort of sort of uh, things. I am also working on a side project in a way to update the mounts for the Z-axis. Making the actual mount is easy. Doing the packaging and the resources for that is a little bit like the hard part of the end, the implementation is the hard part of that project. So, I mean, I have a design and it works fine. I'm going to do the testing and work with uh, Patrick and the packaging team to see if that can be implemented into batch nine as well. Batch nine will kind of wrap up all the small improvements that we've made. I should note that if you did order in batch eight, some of these changes are reflected in your machines already. Um, or you have the option to like replace the parts after uh, we, we sell the parts after the fact. So they're cross compatible, they're backwards compatible. I guess on the topic of spring loaded anti backlash nuts, that was another project we kind of did have been very, very popular. So just for the T8s, 
our first batch was about 100, 100 sets of nuts. Those sold out like very, very quickly. Then we did another batch of 200 nuts. That also sold out very quickly also. We're on, we have a back order of over 200 extra sets of nuts. We're gonna get, I believe, 800 sets in the next week or so. So we'll be able to clear the backlog for that. And we have another 6,000 nuts or about a little more than a thousand sets. They're almost done production, so they'll get shipped here. That Because we have a thousand sets, we're able to eventually put them as default options into the kits. We were able to design them in a way where the cost difference is minor, so we didn't have to increase the price of the machine. On that topic, I will note that batch nine, we're, calling, we're gonna be calling it a long mill mark 2.5, and it'll also add the super long board. So there will be a small price increase of $150 Canadian or about 110 US dollars. We didn't want to make it, uh, well, the pricing difference is one based on the cost of the super long board. And also we feel like, cause customers can buy the super long board on its own for $220 Canadian right now. It doesn't impact any customers too much in terms of the price to be able to get the upgrade. If you decide to buy a machine now, you will be able to upgrade it to the super long board. The super long board was designed to be an upgrade for all the long mills, so you can integrate that to your machine directly. Basically, it's a small price change, at least in our eyes. If you want to buy the machine now, you can buy the machine now uh, and pay an extra $220 later down the line to get the super long board, or you can wait till the machines come with super long boards by default, which will probably be in, I'm just gonna ballpark here, July, August time-ish. Plan your schedule, plan your budget based on that. Other projects happening, Laser Beam and Vortex are shipping out as usual within a couple days. Uh, Kenna and Abeku have been working on different mounting options for the laser. We can improve the user experience if the laser can be mounted and unmounted more quickly. Because right now it's set, hold on by two, uh, a set of two screws which isn't like too bad. And I think that development can help with figuring out future mounting options for different accessories. So there's a bit of engineering stuff going on. They did want me to let everyone know that the alt mill will probably still need screws to hold the laser beam because the machine moves so fast that it can fling the laser beam off of it if it's held on by magnets. They are working on some designs to eliminate that problem, but the alt mill does have mounting points on this router mount to add the same standard accessories and the same pl uh, plates and everything to the front of the router mount. So I don't think people sh need to worry about that if they can actually use it, but there will need to be development for both machines to kind of make them supported. CNC router project. One of the things that uh, we talked about in the last update was um, there was some miscommunication on the understanding of what sort of speed control we needed for the motor, um, but that's been addressed and we've just gotten, we gotten a new board to have better speed control. However, one of the problems is that there's a kind of a specific scenario where the motor will run into the material and then it will slow down for a moment and then pick up speed, like keep the same RPM. And that transition time is not super slow but it's not super fast either and then once it leaves the material and there's no it goes from loaded to no load there's a big jump in the speed and it comes back to be self like regulated to the original speed but it's not as fast and accurate as we'd like to because there's a bit of a up and down sort of wibble wiggle wobble, wibble wobble of the speed range what we suspect is because when they did the motor tuning the shaft of the motor was different than the shaft of the motor that we use with the collets and the spindle body and everything. Johan has sent a prototype of the motor and the body with all, the, like basically a working prototype of the spindle to the factory to get tuned as if it was a fully working system because the motor shaft inertia is different between the test and motor, testing motor that they used at the factory and the testing motor that we use here. If they are able to have the right inertias, they can tune the motor better. It is something that we've been talking about to try to understand the technology better in our side so that we can in the future tune these motors. 
because we think that there's a lot of potential for the motors to be used in different applications. As far as we've been told, it is a very complicated process to actually tune the motors. So I guess we'll cross that bridge. But basically the plan right now is to let the uh, factory tune the motor prototype and get the speed response as clean as possible. If the response is good or better than what we are seeing on the Makita, then it's acceptable for the application and we can move towards production. However, if this can't be tuned out and it's limit and what we suspect is because it's a limitation on the technology, then we may want to consider some different options in terms of what sort of motors we end up using. Yeah, one of them would be to use an encoder to have a fast response on understanding where the speed of the motor is. Alongside with that, um, we have some vet students that are working at the company right now, and they've been working on making a dyno for the motor testing we're doing, and as well as the spindles that we're using for the alt mill. Basically what that looks like, and there's a picture on the blog, one motor spins and the other motor gets loaded. Well, basically you, we generate electric field by passing a current through the coils of the motor to oppose the, to resist the motor and basically with that date like the amount of power we're putting through it we can kind of calculate sorry we can increase the motor load and then we have a power meter that measures how much power is going into the motor to see how much power is being outputted and with those numbers it's a little bit complicated for me but yeah with those numbers we can work out the the, the performance of the motor this is mostly to know what the max power output of the motor is and then the other part which is the torque is um, Robert, who's one of the other engineering students here. He's working on testing the torque of these motors as well as um, for the, the closed loop stepper motors we're using on the alt mill. There's a lot of motor testing going on. L like the good thing is that we have a lot of motors and they all can use the same techniques to do the testing and we're building the systems to do the testing. So it were like triple duting on the work essentially. So Alt Mill was launched last week. Fairly strong response. Um, we had the live stream. If you want to check out the live stream, make sure to go on our website. Um, if you go to the blog, I put a link there or you can go to the YouTube channel. I think that might have been our most popular live stream so far. Over 300 people watching this time. So far, I think we've sold a little more than 100 maybe 120 alt mills so far. So not too bad for a first start. What are sort of our expected, expected range of where the alt mill will be for that is to have about 150 to 200 alt mills sold in the first month. So to address that, we're starting our production batch at 200 units. We have the first batch expected to start shipping in May, June and the rest of the machines to sh start shipping June, uh, July, August and we'll continue to add the orders to the pending orders list that you can also find on the website too, because people's machines will get shipped out in the order of which they get ordered. In terms of like development work and things that are happening with that, I think I mentioned this in the last update, but we had a motor failure in one of the testing for the alt mill. So a th couple of things transpired and we've decided to find another supplier for the motor specifically. And so we've gotten four or five different sets of samples. We're doing the testing now to get the highest quality motor we can. The good thing is that all the motors are pretty similar. Um, they're like a standardized part. We're just kind of testing for quality and performance. We have the gantries for the alt mill done. If we looked at our past videos, those are using our prototype plates, which were unfinished and not very nice. The new ones look very, very nice. Uh, they're anodized black. So there's a little bit of a cosmetic change and they also implement some of the small design changes like the tramming and all that sort of stuff into the, the plate. So we are playing around with that. The first 50, they're either done now or they will be done in the next couple days. So we'll get them shipped over here so we can start assembly of those parts. Uh, and the rails are expected to show up in one to two weeks from now. Uh, so we'll do assembly for that. We did also make some dust shields for the top of the Y axis uh, linear guides because that was like one place we were finding a lot of d dust to be settling on. We're also testing the power and relay power distribution stuff right now uh, which you mentioned in the live stream to be able to shut off the power and be more safe and also distribute power to the motors. It looks like the new prototype has been tested for 200 cycles. We're cycling it for 1000 cycles and if that works 
Um, those will start being put into production. The new power supply just arrived yesterday, so we're doing testing on that. Um, those look pretty good so far, and we have another 50, we have 50 of those power supplies coming uh, next week as well. So that'll cover for the first batch, and the rest of the batch will show up later. A lot of production work, getting shipped stuff shipped over here. Um, we also have. The spindles going through testing now, so once the spindles are finalized, um, those will also start production and get them over here for customers as well. I think the big news for this month is that the super long boards have started shipping. If you guys have been following along with Chris's updates, there were a couple slowdowns in the shipping. One of them was with the customs with the HL. Those arrived in March. And then there was some documentation questions. After some back and forth and hair pulling, we were able to get them a couple days after they arrived, maybe about a week after they arrived. If you look at, there's, there's pictures and some videos there of the new uh, super longboard box, which looks pretty cool. Michael has been working on the jig, kind of like the kachunk thing, to test the, to probe all the pins and everything. Me and Kelsey are working on doing the next batch of 1,500 units. Lastly, to add, uh, ICANN has been working on the CO2 laser. We have a fully working, not fully working, mostly working prototype. Fully working, he says fully working. Fully working prototype now. There's a couple, he's been telling me a couple things on making the mechanism for the mirror alignment, some of the power transmission stuff, but he's been able to get a couple test cuts so far. I think the next steps are to make a new enclosure. He did say that there will be a video update coming out or some sort of update coming out in the next little bit. So keep an eye out for that. I think for me, what I'm all like, what's kind of next for the company, I'll just share my, I just say, I share my unfiltered thoughts. So the, the long mill is like its own product. It's has its own vertical. And if you read my, everything you need to know about the alt mill, I talk about how the long mill is the best machine that we wanted to make that was in a price point and user usability for the beginner user. If you're like, I don't know how to use a CNC machine, I don't want to spend a ton of money, but I still want to make useful stuff, long mill, fantastic. The alt mill, on the other hand, is I want to have a machine that's easy to use, that's powerful, that can bring value. I want to make stuff, I want to make money, blah, 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 alt mill, fantastic. The next part of this question is, how does the team manage the work between these two products. There's a lot of overlap, you know, a lot of software, a lot of the electronics, a lot of the research development, they're kind of similar between the two. There's other parts that are different. The, some of the engineering, some of the production, the type of customers we're getting, things like that, those are different also. That's one part. The other part is the revenue that's coming in for the alt mill. It's not matching long mill yet, but I suspect that it will match very quickly in the next couple of months. And so the question is, what is our, how does our team, how will our team grow with that in mind? I did put out kind of like, I did make like a Google form to be like, hey, if you are interested in working for us, I don't really have a specific role in mind that someone needs to take. But the way that I see it is that our team is going to expand. We don't know exactly which people we need to fill to make our company continue to be a success. I will probably put out at some point a kind of a general call of, hey, if you're interested in working for us, let us know what you do. If you feel like there's a fit here, it can help me make a decision on what should I prioritize in terms of our team growth and kind of get a context on what people are looking for. It's gonna be a pretty busy uh, couple months and we'll see some new faces. That's uh, April for you guys. Make sure you check out the blog. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next month.